Two brand new games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive are currently out on Kickstarter. And in this week's show, we're going to be taking a look at both of them. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Welcome back. It's been a good month since our last show, and I'll make sure I'll set up a Q&A so I can tell you all about what's going on and what I've got planned for the channel. But coming back after a month off of YouTube, we've got two brand new games for the Sega Mega Drive. Both of them on Kickstarter, and both of them still with plenty of time left on them if you want to back them and get yourself a copy of these two new games. Our first game on Kickstarter now is Hunter Girls. The game was originally released on Steam back in 2021 and has a lovely cohesive pixel art style which perfectly fits with the tech of the original Mega Drive and Genesis. The game is a runner and not the mobile style runners that incorporate rogue-like elements that they then make you spend money on. This is a classic runner. These games require the ability to learn the sequence of the level then combine them often with rapid button presses to navigate the terrain. Hunter Girls takes this classic game design and adds some of its own DNA to the mix. You start by controlling a single character that can jump and hold up a shield. As you progress, you meet another traveling companion who runs behind you and can fire arrows. And then finally, you meet a mage who can make you immune to magical attacks and later on in the game is able to fire magical blasts. The premise of the game is simple enough. Perform the right moves at the right time and you'll get through the level. The simplicity has hidden depths though. For starters, the characters run behind each other and mistiming a jump can see your first character just make the jump but the other two fall to their death or hit by a projectile. Also, all your moves apart from your jump are charge moves. This means that you can use them for a limited time during a level so asset management is important. You'll often have to ration your arrows as there are only enough to get you through all the enemies in a given level. The same goes for your first character's shield. Hold the shield up too long and your ability to use it again vanishes. This resource management, coupled with the dexterity needed to navigate a level and the need to memorize the layout makes Hunter Girls a particularly challenging game. This will frustrate you as you'll die over and over and over again. But as soon as you beat a level, the feeling of success is amazing. It'd be nice to see the team add an easy level to the game that perhaps turns off the charging mechanism of your different moves. Maybe finishing the game on easy gives you a bad ending. I love the art style of the game. It brings that modern blocky pixel artwork to the console, something we rarely saw in Sega's 16-bit catalog. The animations are smooth and react well with the control system. Enemy deaths are satisfying and the animation does a good job of foreshadowing their upcoming attack moves. There are some nice static cutscene screens and the on-screen display is easy to read. Although it'd be nice to have some on-character indicators telling you how much charge you have left for each character. Having this info currently in the top left means that it's outside of your play space and so often the only time you realize that you're out of arrows or that your shield is gone is when they no longer work. Simple indicators above the character's head could help this and allowing players to turn this extra HUD on and off will give players the chance to define the visual aesthetics of the game. There are also some nice particle effects like leaves falling down and blood spurts. The audio in the game is upbeat and works well with the universe. There are also some nice sound effects for arrow shots and deflections, and I'd love to hear more of this in the final game, with enemy death sounds and sound effects for when you successfully pick up items. The game has 15 days left on Kickstarter and has already been successfully funded. The campaign is now working towards its next stretch goal, which is three new bosses, and after this, the stretch goal are new visual elements in the game. You'll be happy to hear that Hunter Girls can be backed for just the ROM and soundtrack, or you can buy the cart, ROM and soundtrack, or you can get the ROM, soundtrack, and a complete inbox copy with a very reasonable $45 price tag for the most expensive tier, which is the complete inbox version. PSCD Games are managing the conversion and are publishing the game on the Genesis and Mega Drive. I love the work these guys do, and they put in a huge amount of effort into all the games they bring to Sega's 16-bit console.
please consider supporting their Kickstarter and also check out their other games that they've made. You can find these on their website. I'll have details of the Kickstarter and PSCD Games website in the description below. Sacred Lines 2, not unsurprisingly, is the sequel to Sacred Lines, developed by Sasha Darko and originally released by Watermelon. Its sequel is now being published by Megacat Studios and is on Kickstarter with 18 days left to back it. The good news is for those that are interested is that the game has been fully funded and is now onto its stretch goals. There are some interesting ones there as well. The first is that the game will get some standalone DLC. Then there's an alternative ending and lastly a port to Steam. The game is a visual novel, think text adventure with static images that has branching storyline and puzzles. The game is simple, being a text adventure game, and success of this type of game comes down to how compelling the story is and how complex the branching system is. The first game was simple and I enjoyed the story but the branching was not complex with all paths ultimately bringing you back to the main story. It also ended quite abruptly. The demo for this sequel, from what I've played so far, seems to have addressed some of these issues. The story is far more compelling with multiple story choices right from the start of the game. It's far more darker and violent than the original, and there are far more decisions and interactions. In the demo, there is still an issue though where most decisions will take you down the same story path. Just as I got a sense of perhaps two or three main branches of the story, I was guided or backed up to the main storyline again. This is just the demo and this could change in the full game. There are also some small continuity errors. For example, I went down a story branch that saw me kill a person and then the branch came to an end. My character decides to leave the location and I was back on the main story arc. But my previous story arc decision branch was still there, so I took it again. And I was shown the same text that saw me kill the same person again. I could do this over and over again, breaking the immersion of the story. What I would have liked to have seen is this option greyed out or just not available anymore. What would be even cooler is if I took this same branch, but instead the game tells me that I passed the body of the person that I had just killed earlier. And so acknowledging my previous actions and making the world feel more cohesive. Visually, the game uses 2D and 3D digitized stills to accompany the story. They are dark and eerie and suit the narrative of the world. The team could do more with the color palette on the Mega Drive and it would have been nice to see some parallax scrolling in the game. There are also parts of the story where a virtual dice is rolled. You never see the dice and the only way you know what you rolled is by the choice of story arc you're given. It keeps the game moving forward but it would have been nice to have seen this visualized. Otherwise, the gritty, dithered, digitized images suit the game. The audio is also thematically in sync with the rest of the game, but the demo is short and doesn't give much away when it comes to what we can expect from Sacred Line 2's musical score. I would love to have some sound effects in the game to go along with some of the actions that are happening on screen in the story. Screams of people dying, keys turning in a lock, the pages of a book being read. I love to see different genres of games being developed for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive and Sacred Line 2 fills this itch to have a decent graphical novel on the console. There are also a ton of different reward pledges in the campaign. There are 12 rewards in total, everything from just the ROM to a reward that has a complete and box version, a limited edition version, poster, stickers, keychain, ROM, pin, magnet, tapestry, a patch postcard, statue, and your name in the game. If you'd like to back Sacred Line 2, then you can click on the link in the description below.
two very different games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive there. Games that I don't think we saw, or if we did, rarely saw on the Genesis and Mega Drive back in the day. Remember, if you'd like to support or just check out any of these games, that you can drop down into the description below and click on the links I've provided. Now, if you've enjoyed this week's show and you like Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, you like retro gaming, then it'd be great if you can share this video amongst like-minded fans of the console and retro games. If you're eager to watch more, then why not check out the two videos we've got for you over here.